Welcome to today's ERP support training session, focusing on commission rates, commission processing, and paying commissions. A common method used to reimburse sales staff is to pay commissions based on sales. Commission pay may be added to a salary or hourly wage, or it may be the sole method of paying a salesperson. Salesperson commissions are often calculated from the sales total or the gross profit of product or services sold by each person. EBMS offers tools to calculate various commission rates for individual sales staff based on the type of product or services sold. Commission reports are available to report sales invoices and commissions for a specific time period. Reliable methods to calculate and report commissions can be an important tool to manage a sales-based business. Some scenarios. A building materials supply center uses both inside and outside sales staff to sell their product. These salespersons have some price flexibility to match the price with the size of the project and the effort required to sell and deliver the product. The company uses the EBMS inventory system to calculate the gross profit of each sale based on the pr product cost and margins. Each salesperson is given a commission rate for the building materials they sell. These rates are based on the salesperson's experience and varies based on the product or services sold. Commission rates also vary based on payroll overhead or other reimbursements. Commission pay gives the manager the ability to project and manage costs, including sales labor. Another scenario. A specialty agriculture equipment company uses outside salespersons to design, quote, and sell solutions for various dairy farmers. The commission method of reimbursement gives salespersons the flexibility to tailor the solution to meet a farmer's needs and budget while maintaining the targeted margin. A small price adjustment on equipment that has limited margin and or the adding more profitable services may dramatically affect the salesperson's profit-based commission. Some costs on the sales invoices, such as tax or delivery costs, are excluded from the commission calculation entirely. EBMS includes tools to calculate report commissions paid using an accounts payable invoice on a weekly or monthly basis. A third scenario. A heavy equipment sales and service company manages labor costs by paying staff based on commissions, flat rate service pay, and performance pay. Reimbursing employees based on sales, on efficiency, or production can be used to create staff incentives and reward results. Commission pay for new equipment and part sales are based on gross profit, which is calculated on the profit margin. Pay rate for the services are based on gross sales. Staff is paid when the sales invoice is fully paid by the customer, motivating salespersons to collect payment after the sale. Managing outstanding commissions based on the status of sales invoices and project adjustments are clearly listed on the commission report. These detailed reports are distributed to each salesperson along with their pay. So the subjects we're gonna cover in this session regarding the salesperson commission feature within EBMS are these, creating a salesperson list, setting commission rates, processing sales, evaluating and processing commissions, reporting commissions, and then paying the sales staff. Before we get into all the features, I'm going to highlight just a few of EBMS's uh, commission weaknesses. The reason for this is to give you some tips of how you can then use some of the flexibility within the commission module to address these weaknesses. One of the issues with EBMS's commission module is that you can only set one salesperson per invoice. This limitation requires you to possibly set up other salesperson records that are based that are created for a combination. For example, if Beth and John work as a team, 
uh, in sales and they each get a percentage of the sales commission, then you may want to create a Beth slash John record. That would be separate from Beth's main record and John's main record, which would be for projects that they sell individually. Or you could have a Beth at 60, John at 40, to represent the percentage that each one gets when they sell those projects. Or you may have uh, just a simple 60 slash 40, although you would have to make a difference if there's multiple pairs, salesperson pairs that work together. You would need to separate them so you can run a report for their com combined projects. Another item is that the as, as you will see, commission rates are based on general ledger codes. So one of the things that's important is to make sure that the categories with your sales categories with different commission rates are also separated in the general ledger. So if you have part sales that have a different commission rate than new equipment sales, then it's important to have them separated based on that GL code. Note that the these general ledger codes uh, are is what drives the rate, which means I can't just quickly change from one rate to another. I need to change the GL codes in order to change the rate. The third area is that the reprocessing commissions and reporting commissions is not necessarily associated with each other based on like a print button or, or some type of other convenient way to generate a report and process the commission at the same time. So what, may, what you may wanna do is if the commission is paid with an accounts payable check to link some of the commission reports to the vendor print button, or if they're paid through payroll or the labor module to connect them to the worker records. We'll address more details of how you set up the salesperson, how you set up rates, and how you set up uh, how you pay the uh, salesperson later on in this presentation. So what are the big benefits of using the salesperson module in EBMS is that I can create a list of salespersons. So I create a database of all my salesperson record. And within each record, I have the general tab, which contains the contact information. I have a list of commission settings. I then can also view, quickly view all the invoices or proposals just by clicking on that tab. One of the big benefits of using these lists is that the salesperson fields on the sales invoice and proposal is not just a free form entry but rather can be uh, selected from a search list. It autofills, and this consistent codes makes reporting commissions much more consistent. Within the invoice tab of each salesperson, it is relatively easy to look at all the sales orders or all the outstanding invoices that uh, apply to this particular salesperson. So it's a quick query rather than running a report to view and evaluate the invoices for a salesperson. If the salesperson is given access to EBMS, this can be a common place to view open invoices. The same thing is true with the proposal tab and the proposal tab adds the ability to sort proposals based on date, based on a quote number, customer, or the next contact. We're gonna be spending most of our time looking at the commission tab of the salesperson record. Again, the salesperson list and the way I access the account and look at commissions is under sales options and then clicking on the salesperson tab. The first thing you'll notice at the top of the commission tab is a liability account. This is a financial general ledger account that is used to record commission payments before they're paid to the salesperson. So this liability account is credited with the commission amount, 
amount whenever the sales invoice is processed. So whenever an invoice is processed and financials are updated with sales and up, uh, accounts receivable numbers, it also includes the amount of the commission. These liability transactions are then used to manage accrued commissions and payments. So I have a specific record for each commission that is being paid. The other benefit of this liability account is that the commission cost is uh, applied to the profit loss statement immediately on the sale and the expense is not uh, realized when the salesman is paid but rather when the invoice is processed. Underneath the commission account you will see a list of commission categories. This is how we'll set the new rates. To create a new record, I click on the New button, obviously clicking on the Properties button to edit existing rates. The system allows you to have many different rates for each salesperson. As you'll notice, these commission categories are set per salesperson, so it's one salesperson's rates can be completely different from another. This new commission uh, category record uh, starts with an ID and a description to identify this particular commission category. The user then identifies the, the sales account, the general ledger account range. And this can be, uh, for example, all the sales accounts, even between different departments. Uh, so you can create a commission property for each account, meaning that you would put the same sales account in both fields, or you can do a range. In fact, if the commission for sales is, is the same no matter what they sell, you could put place the entire revenue GL account range in this field and have a single commission property for the salesperson. If the sales account covers multiple departments, you will want to enable the use sales account department for the expense account. What that does is make the expense account field below a five digit code. I then use the department of the sales account to duplicate to the expense account. If I don't have a range of departments, I can disable this option and basically enter the entire nine digit expense account GL code. So at the bottom of this commission property, you'll see a table of commissions. Now, normally this table will have a single record with the current percentage, commission percentage, but it does allow you to set a list of percentages based on date. So if a commission changed, like for example, uh, last year's commission was different than this year, you can keep last year's commission rate in there, add a second, and the system will set the proper rate based on the invoice date. The percent commission rate records consist of the formula, which lets you select between percent of sales profit. That would be the difference between the sales pr uh, price and the cost. The percent of the gross sales, which would be the total amount shown on the invoice, and a dollar amount per pound or per weight in the invoice. The record then is uh, has an effective date, which is used if you have multiple records. It's important to put when that effective date starts. And the end date is needed if that commission rate expires. So let's look at a few of these commission rate formulas. So percent of gross sales is often used for services, products that have uh, no cost of goods sold, in other words, where the margin isn't uh, obvious, or where the pricing is not changed by the salesperson. The percent of gross profit, on the other hand, is based on the margin, the profit margin. And this is often used for a discounted product where the salesperson adjusts the pricing. 
obviously if a product pricing is reduced, the percentage of profit commission is reduced much more than if you calculate the commission on gross sales. Uh, one of the requirements for using gross profit is that you have to have a good inventory management system to calculate the cost of goods sold. Uh, so you have to have good perpetual inventory tracking the counts and values of your general inventory product to have a good FIFO uh, cost, a good cost that calculates uh, the profit margin. Now, the nice thing about using profit margin is that uh, you can base your commissions on the profit of even items such as serialized items or used equipment that's been refurbished, that has its own pricing, its own cost. It's also ideal for special orders. So for example, if I have product uh, in stock and then I uh, sell a large amount, say a thousand of a certain widget to a customer and I use special orders, the cost of that special order is then uh, copied to the sales order, which gives me a profit, uh, proper profit margin for that large order. It may have been discounted. My cost may have been discounted, all affecting the salesperson's commission. The commission based on pounds or weights it is obviously the only rate that's not based on a percentage calculation. Uh, this would be used for product where the commission is not based on the price or the cost, but rather on the amount of pounds sold. So that concludes creating the setup of the commission categories. Again, this would be repeated for each salesperson. Uh, and a salesperson can have as many commission categories as necessary, allowing different rates for different products, uh, different uh, means of calculations for different products uh, or different commission formulas for different sales. A salesperson is not limited to just a certain number of categories. So after these commission categories are configured, it, commission processing is somewhat in the background. When I process a sales invoice is when the commission records actually are calculated. So some of the key information that you enter into a sales invoice uh, that generates commissions are the ones on the screen. Notice that uh, under A, we have the salesperson field. Obviously the salesperson must be selected for commissions to be calculated for that sales order. Now that salesperson can be copied from the customer record. So you could have a default salesperson for each customer. This is uh, used a lot when salespeople act as account managers or are in charge of a particular customer. A salesperson can also be defaulted from the username. Now, if that's done, it's important to match the username to the username syntax to the commission salesperson uh, ID. The two must match or you'll get an error when you, uh, when a particular person logs into EBMS. I'm sorry, not when they log into EBMS, when they go to process a sales invoice and it defaults to the username, if there's not a matching salesperson record, it'll give them an error. But the salesperson field is important. Uh, you can also manually set this, but this field is important to initiate the commission record creation. The second item that I highlighted here would be the product. And obviously, like I said before, some commissions require good costs of goods sold. So you want to do inventory items here that are track count, serialized item lots, or other perpetual inventory to make sure that the costs are properly calculated. Item C is obviously extended price on the sales invoice. Now that's the amount that's used for the sales-based commissions. The actual dollar amount times the commission rate for that general ledger code 
is used to, to calculate the commission. D is the actual GL account. Like I mentioned before, the sales, the commission rate is connected to the GL code. So depending on what that general ledger code is set to, depends on what commission rate or maybe no commission at all that is used. Now obviously the GL code is normally set by the product ID. So it streamlines this whole process if, if the configuration is done properly and based on the product, based on the setting in the commission category, uh, my commission is automatically calculated. Now E would be for those profit-based commission rates uh, which we talked about earlier, which is an ideal way to calculate commissions if this prod, if this margin, uh, this cost of goods sold amount is accurate. So the sales invoice is the only place where commission transactions are created. Uh, using a, for example, proposal, you can enter a salesperson but that salesperson setting does not really uh, create any commissions till it is uh, a sales invoice is created from the proposal and then the invoice is processed. So processing commission is again done within the salesman's record. So I would go to sales options, click on the salesperson tab, open the specific salesperson's record click on the commission tab and then click on the transaction button as seen on the screen. Processing commissions is done individually for each salesperson. So you open the record, click on the transaction button, go through the process we're about to explain, and then do the same thing for the next salesperson. The transaction list has a payment date on the top left corner. By entering the payment date, you limit this transaction list to only the transactions before or on that date. The, the second option is to list the transactions in detail, which basically means that you list every invoice line that has a commission attached to it. The second option is to summarize it by invoice, which gives you the total commission per invoice. Now, this Using the Summarize by Invoice option allows you to also expand that and look at the individual invoices for each, the individual lines or commission lines for each invoice. The next step would be to select which commissions you're going to pay for. Now, EBMS gives you two options. You can click on the Select Paid which only selects the transactions that are part of an invoice that are fully paid. Now again, if an invoice is partially paid or even overly paid, overpaid, as long as the invoice is not marked paid and is still outstanding, it will not be selected. The benefit of using the select paid is that the salesperson does not get paid his commission until the customer pays for the invoice. Now the select all button is used to select all the transactions before the payment date, meaning that I want to, to pay the person uh, based on the invoice date, even if the invoice is not paid. The third option would be to manually select the commissions you want to pay for. Now you'll see on the screen that there is a negative number. Uh, this transaction would happen if you unprocess an invoice. So if I uh, process an invoice, obviously it creates commission transactions. When I unprocess, it, it creates the same reversing transactions. And obviously if I make changes and reprocess it, <clears throat> it would make the third step. So the system will handle invoice changes well, even if the, the salesman is paid, or if he's not paid his commission, the system will prompt the user to adjust that salesperson's commission amount. Next would be the ability to adjust commissions. So you can adjust the commission amount by giving a range of dates, clicking the particular commission category or ID. If you select all, it will select all of this salesman's commissions for this range of dates. 
you then are able to set a new percentage and it would recalculate the commission for that range of date. Obviously, adjustments should be used sparingly and should not be used unless there has been an adjustment required to that salesperson's commission. After the transactions have been selected, the user should click on the process button on the lower right corner. The process button will, be, will prompt you for a payment date. This would be the date that is then associated with this group of commission transactions. When you click finished, these transactions will be marked paid and stamped with this particular date. The next step then is to go to the reports menu uh, or go to a print button where you have a preset a particular commission report. You want to select one of the various reports in EBMS that generates the information you need not only to total the commission so you know what to pay the salesperson, but you may also want to distribute this report with the salesperson's uh, paycheck to describe what the, how the commissions were calculated. The last step in this process then is to actually pay the commissions. Now EBMS does not actually generate the uh, payment record from the commission process. It, uh, when you process commissions, it, it uh, tags it with a, the payment date. You then generate reports based on that payment date, which will print out what you've selected and processed. And then based on that date, you will take the total and either enter it in the labor module under a time card uh, or in the accounts payable invoice as an accounts payable check. This would determine if the pay is paid via uh, payroll or if it's an outside salesperson where you just generate an accounts payable check. The commission process within the payroll module is fairly extensive. You can create a, a commission pay type, uh, associate a particular work code, and then just plug the total, the commission total, into the time card. Now, EBMS allows you to have a mixture of pay types on one time card. So like we mentioned before, this commission may be their full pay. In, in that case, you would have a uh, a record for each type of commission on the time card. Or you may have a salary pay or even an hourly pay as a base pay and the commission is just an additional pay type record. The second way would be to print the, to enter the commission rate on the accounts payable invoice. Again, it could be one or more records with the amount that's found in the report. Note that the commission record in the labor module and the uh, commission invoice in the expense module is not created from the commission module, but is entered from the reports that the user prints. Using the commission tool can be a really powerful way to calculate, report, process, and pay salesman commissions. The documentation for this for the commission module is found under the sales module uh, the sales documentation under salesperson commission. The details of what I covered in this session are found in that documentation. So let me summarize. The salesman co commission module within EBMS creates a salesperson list. This feature of just having a salesperson list can be reason enough to use this module. You may not use the commission processing and rather just use sales invoice reports, but the benefit of the salesperson list is it creates a consistent salesperson setting. 
The module gives the user the ability to set various commission rates for various salespersons. It then processes these commissions when the sales invoice is processed. It then gives the tools to evaluate and process the commissions themselves based on a date. You can then report on those process commissions and then generate either a time card record or a expense invoice to pay those commissions. This concludes this training session on payroll or salesperson commissions.